Another type of activity ratio is what we call the receivables turnover ratio. Now, as an activity ratio, this particular ratio focuses on the firm's ability to try to take an asset and to generate some kind of cash or sales revenue, just like we talked about in a prior video on the inventory turnover. Here, though, our focus is on accounts receivable. Now, we know that an accounts receivable, which I'm going to abbreviate simply as AR, uh, simply represents a, a sale on credit. And so we are essentially owed some type of money. We've provided a good or a service and we have not been paid though. We've been, we've been given a promise to pay. And a lot of times we provide maybe 30 days or so uh, f from the time that the transaction is, is uh, finalized to when that receipt of cash comes in. And of course, if we're going to be doing business on credit terms, in order to be able to manage cash flow effectively, we need to be able to convert those accounts receivable, which are technically listed as assets on a balance sheet, into cash because they provide us with no value until they become cash, which of course we can utilize for payroll or inventory or whatever the case may be, whatever we'd want to purchase. So receivable turnover ratio is really important for companies that do business on credit, which does happen in quite a few areas. So first, let's talk through how do we calculate the receivables turnover ratio. In order to do that, we need two particular items. And before that, let's go ahead and write out AR turnover. The first thing that we need are what we call net credit sales. Net credit sales actually represent sales transactions that are done via credit. And so what it's going to do is you're going to take into account credit sales. So sales generated from credit, and you're actually going to, it's going to subtract out uh, any returns from credit sales to get net credit sales. And then we're going to divide that figure by our average accounts receivable. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how do we get the average accounts receivable? It's very similar to how we calculated the average inventory turnover, average inventory uh, in a prior video. So we're going to need two things. Uh, the first thing is we're going to need beginning inventory, which I'll abbreviate as just B inventory for that period. And we're going to need ending inventory, which I'll abbreviate as simply E and then we're going to actually divide that figure by two to get an average. So if you're looking at your balance sheet, which is where you're going to find the uh, the asset management ratio, uh, you're going to find the balance sheet for one period, and you're going to go to the next period and find or the accounts receivable from that period, and you're going to compute the average, and that'll give you average accounts receivable. So let's walk through a quick example and calculate uh, accounts receivable, and then we'll go ahead and do some kind of basic analysis. So for starters, let's go ahead and say that we've got $135,000 as net credit sales, and we're going to divide that by our average accounts receivable. Let's, let's say we calculate that at $35,000. So dividing those two figures, we're going to get roughly 3.9. Now, again, like an inventory turnover ratio, this figure is not a percentage. It's meant to represent how many times uh, we actually will collect or how many times we collect our full accounts receivable in a given period of time. So this could be a month, it could be a quarter, or it could be a year, depending upon your beginning and ending accounts receivable numbers that you utilize in the example. So in this case, we've collect our accounts receivable 3.9 times in a given period. Now, we can't really do a whole lot of analysis and draw a number of conclusions based on the one figure. We know that we simply lack a baseline. We lack comparison. There are a couple of things to think about. We, of course, want to do our analysis and look at prior uh, receivable turnover ratios. We want to compare ourselves to other companies that operate in a similar space. Those are important things to do. But what I want to talk about is is roughly what, what happens if the figure is too high or too low, similar to how we talked about inventory turnover. So let's say that we've got a high receivable turnover ratio. What are some things that we can infer based upon that? Well, you know, really, if it's too high, um, and you might say, well, that sounds like it would be really awesome, right? If we were collecting our money multiple times over, that would be really good. But one of the things we want to think about is we could actually have uh, too strict of an AR policy or accounts receivable policy. And that might be limiting 
our sales revenue, right? If we if we have these guidelines that require people to pay very quickly, we might have a group of customers that may not do business with us because our policies and our guidelines are just too strict and they can't meet those terms. So we might have an opportunity to loosen some of those policies that might allow us to gather more sales revenue, by essentially giving us, uh, expanding our opportunities to sell products or services. So that's one thing to think about if your accounts receivable turnover ratio is too high. Now, the other part of this is we have a very low AR and we know the obvious thing of that, which means that we are just not successful at collecting. And this could be uh, possibly an issue with how we evaluate people on credit. Uh, We might want to take a look at the processes that we use to evaluate whether or not to extend credit. And perhaps we're providing credit to people that maybe uh, we, we shouldn't. And maybe we need to provide a little bit of stricter guidelines surrounding what that looks like. Um, we might not have uh, do a really good job of actually collecting those funds. And so we might need to be a little bit more proactive uh, by contacting the different parties parties that we do business with uh, and being a little bit more forceful and trying to collect that. Because again, much like inventory and accounts receivable, although it's an asset, it doesn't provide us with any value. So our focus is how do we take that accounts receivable and how do we turn it into cash uh, relatively quickly, not to the point to where we're kind of uh, pushing away business by having too strict policies, but ultimately providing the right conditions for people to purchase and then encouraging them to convert. And what we know is the longer that an account stays in accounts receivable, the less likely that particular party is to pay. And so our goal really is to try to convert as many as we can within those first 30 days, because as time usually, as time lengthens, our chances of collecting begin to decrease dramatically.